Hey guys, welcome back to another video from A-Level Lessons. Alright, we're going to be looking at a slightly different video in today's video. We're going to be looking at how we can take effective notes when it comes to studying for your exams, be it A-Levels, O-Levels, or any other sort of exam that you may be taking. This is going to be a crucial video in ensuring that you are able to arrange your notes, okay, your content that you are basically picking up along the way, in a way which ensures that you are able to apply it later on when it comes to the exam, and you are actually able to understand the content that you are learning. Right? I believe that when it comes to any sort of exam, content mastery is key. You should not be memorizing because memorizing does not help at all. You should be... be you should be arranging your notes in a way whereby it ensures that you are able to understand the concepts and be able to apply the concepts when it comes to the actual paper itself. So I'm going to be looking at various ways in which I myself actually did my notes when it came to preparing for A-levels and they were definitely helpful and very effective in ensuring that I scored majority of my A's, right? And maybe 1B. Right, so we're going to be looking at those specifics. Um, I'm not going to be jumping into things like what you should be taking notes for each individual subject, why are you supposed to be looking out for. If you're interested in that sort of a video, you can just leave a comment in the section, comment section below and I will create a video on that as well for each individual subject. But this video, we're going to be looking more at the various types of notes that you could possibly want to adopt. Right, the, the different practices that I adopted that you may deem fit to be able to help you in uh, ensuring that you're able to master your content better. So let's just jump right in since we have nothing else. All right, so what is the purpose of writing notes? Right? First and foremost, let's try and understand what the purpose of writing notes are because a lot of our friends will often tell us like, oh bro, you know, there's no point in writing notes, man. Like, it's not going to help or anything. Um, but in reality, you have to understand that, yes, to a certain extent, writing notes, right, when it comes to certain types of notes, you may feel that you're not actually getting anything into your head. And it is very, very normal to feel that way. But I want you to remember that at the end of the day, it is a build-up. Right, we'll see, we'll see later on why. So notes are supposed to help you in creating a better understanding and be able to absorb Okay, all of the content, uh, content knowledge that you're actually learning uh, for your entire syllabus, right, for across the board for all your different subjects. So different types of notes will come with different purposes and different outcomes, right? Of course, it's tentative to the type of subject. Uh, for example, you cannot be writing essays for a science subject if the science subject only focuses on, let's say, MCQ-based questions. So different notes types will actually come with different purposes. So these are the main few um, types of notes that I feel are more or less relevant, uh, relevant or at least you have um, done one of these sets of notes before, I would think. So there's going to be your memorization notes. So this is when you, you basically just chunk on a bunch of um, words or a bunch of things from your textbook into a set of notes that is for you to memorize and that's about it. Right, you have got the mastery or comprehension note. So this is when it comes down to actually um, being able to master the content that you are studying. Right, So these notes will help you to actually master the content better. Right? We'll see examples later on. You have got analytical notes, which is basically going to be notes that come in the form of analysis. So for example, when it comes to econs, your causal links, those can be a form of notes. Your economics diagrams, right? demand supply diagrams, MC equals to MR, these are also um, analytical notes. You have got quick or summarized notes. So quick notes are very, very simple. That means they are very easy to do. They are very, very fast. Things like mind maps, right? These are very, very quick and they are all condensed into a very small um, set of notes for you to easily just see and you understand what content you are studying for. And the last one that I would think that some of you guys may practice would be question-centric notes. So this is when you have an actual question, for example, an essay question, and from there you branch it out. So either you do an essay on it, you start to actually branch it out into question analysis. Um, these can be notes as well, right? And it is when you use questions to your advantage, right? Your actual A-level questions, actual O-level questions, and you use those kind of um, um, questions to actually form the basis of how it should be answered and what kind of content should be applied to that question itself. So we'll look at different examples of these later on. Um, but first and foremost, I want you to make sure that you first understand what your present needs are and ensure that you create the necessary notes to address it. When it comes to writing notes, you're not going to be writing notes for the fun of it, for the sake of writing notes. You're writing notes because you want to address a purpose, right? You want to address a need, a specific need that, um, for instance, maybe you are lacking thereof or either that you are unsure of a certain concept, you do notes to ensure that you clarify 
this concept to ensure that you address whatever need um, you are you are or, or whatever doubts that you are currently facing. So let's go through what are some different layers of notes that you may want to adopt. So these are my layers of notes. Okay, During my A-levels, what happens was that I did five layers of notes for each different subject. So geography, economics, general paper, so on and so forth. Um, I crafted this set of five different types of notes. It may sound crazy to you. I think I was indeed a bit crazy, right? Five layers sounds like um, a crazy amount of notes to do right for each different subject especially with the amount of content but for me it definitely helped a lot and we'll see what these five layers are, are supposed to be like right um, I basically saw these five layers of notes as my lines of defense so the first one would be to like kind of like be the front line right and then after that so on and so forth um, it got stronger and stronger al along the way um, for which my fifth set was when I was ready to sit for the exams um, and each layer sought to build on a different area of my understanding of the subject so we'll see later on why I managed to do this. How did I manage to actually achieve this as well? Um, each different set of notes would address a different need in that that kind of like that that um container of content, right? So let's say if you're looking at a certain concept on let's say um market failure, we're looking at let's say um all the different externalities, the different public goods. Basically, each different type of notes. Or each different layer of notes would seek to address a different area within this category of market failure. Right, I know it may sound a bit confusing now and you're like, wait, how does that even work? Uh, we'll look at that very, very soon. So my five best pals or my five layers of notes, which I still have in my um, bookshelf today, um, would very simply be the first one is going to be called copying the textbook. Second one is called point forms. Third one is online notes. My fourth layer was called question-centric notes. And my last one was known as mind maps. I think all of you already know what mind maps are. Right? We're going to get to that very soon. I think it's very scary. Um, a lot of people hate mind maps, okay? but I'll show you why mind maps can be fun to do and how to actually go about doing it. So the first layer of notes for me was called copying the textbook. So as the name suggests, okay, I do not have an example to show you in this set of slides because it is literally as the name suggests, you copy the entire textbook. And that was what I did. Um, it may sound very, very crazy, but if you had enough time, especially for the current SAJC ones or you are just starting out school, if you are able to start from the start, right, when you first issued your textbook for the first team, the first subject, the first syllabus, go ahead and start to, to practice this because it's actually very, very helpful. The purpose of copying a textbook is for foundation building. So as the name suggests, right, it is really copying the entire textbook. Here, of course, it's just the important bits. You're not going to be copying oh, page number one or um, copying footnote number one and all that kind of things. That will be just crazy, right? So you copy only the things that are actually important. So while copying it, may sound like an absolute time waster and highly redundant, right? It does actually come with a lot of benefits. It is hidden benefits that you would never feel until you actually reach the fourth or fifth layer. So it helps in creating a strong foundation at the back of your head, right? So you may not feel anything at first. You may feel like you are just copying, 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 and you're wondering what on earth is going into your head. Trust me, at the back of your head, something is getting in there. Right, believe it or not, something will get in there. When it comes to the later layers of notes, you realize that, oh wow, actually my foundation is so, so strong because of this layer of notes that you did. Um, and the best part is that it can be done anytime. So especially in your free time, right? when you don't feel like using your brain to actually study, to actually do heavy, intense questions, you can just simply just take out your notebook and just start to copy. Right, So just copy, copy, work forward. And as you're copying, you start to register certain information in your head and it will get locked in there right so for those of you guys who are coming to the exams very very soon right you see you're watching this video right before your exams um and you are like how can i even you know copy entire te like copy the entire textbook in just one day right do not worry you do not have to this like i said is the first layer it is usually when you first start school or when you are first um into your first year you still have time then go ahead and you know, try this out, right? If you're already reaching the last legs, the last laps, don't waste time on doing this. It is not advisable and it is just going to waste your time. All right. So this is the first layer. The second layer is point forms. So point forms is like the name suggests as well. Okay. The purpose of point forms is to actually start to get us to memorize 
a bit of start of, of the things we're learning, right? This is not full on memorizing. So this is in the form of getting knowledge more into your head um, in terms of ensuring that you kind of like start to conceptualize them. You start to shorten information. You condense them to make it easier for your own understanding. And it is for stronger foundation building. So I do not have a picture for this as well. Apologies for that. Uh, I don't have a picture for this as well, but it is very, very similar. You're just basically copying the textbook, but you're summarizing everything. So you are making it to point forms instead. Um, and this, this is a stage whereby you should be getting information into your head and you will start to realize that you are actually beginning to remember some content. This is given the fact that you have done the first layer, which is copying the textbook. So this is the second layer, right? Which is why when you're doing point forms, you will start to realize that, okay, actually I'm starting to remember some content some of the content that I've learned before or I've heard in, in class when my teacher taught, taught about it, I realized that now as I'm writing it into a point form, it's starting to make more sense. So you will definitely feel that as you're doing these uh, point forms. So it aids in reaffirming or reestablishing any pre-existing knowledge that you have gained and it continues to build on your existing knowledge. Right, not only that, it helps to also consolidate information in easy to understand point forms and helps you to retain this information in your head. So when you actually um, do point forms, right, you are basically consolidating, let's say, a stanza, like a, a huge chunk, a, a paragraph of words into just a very, very simple point form. So it helps you to be able to condense that information into something that is shorter and easier to understand for yourself. Right, so this is what the second layer is. So the third layer is online notes. Right? For me, um, my online notes was more of an analytical and a quick fix set of notes so it doesn't have to be online for you it can always be on a, just a piece of a4 paper uh, it's up to you um, you do not have to follow this as well but for me i am generally a faster typer so it was kind of like a faster way of actually doing notes for me which is why i decided to go ahead and do up some online notes um, this set of notes actually allowed me to think more critically and be more analytical in terms of consolidating and crafting more critical notes so these notes are going to be like the more critical ones, right? These are the notes that's going to take you to the next level. It is going to take your understanding from basically um, a basic level to a more intermediate level, right? To actually understanding how to apply the knowledge that let's, let's say you have copied or you have done in point forms, how to actually apply them to the actual questions itself. So it's getting more critical. We are getting more um, analytical in the way we think. So it can be easily replaced with a set of analytical um, hard copy notes. It is really completely up to you how you want to do this. But it is good to have a set of analytical notes, right? So this set of notes, what do I mean by analytical? It means that you have, a, let's say, a certain concept. Um, let's say we look at a certain concept on, let's say... Mm, all right, because there's, there's no one concept that I think applies to everyone here because there's a few of you who do job, a few of you who do econs. Some of you guys do math, some of you guys do... Okay, so let's look at GP, for example, right? So let's say we're looking at GP. We're looking at, let's say, the arts, right? We're looking at the arts as a um, potential essay question. So when you're doing these critical, or these analytical notes, you're looking at the arts and you're looking at what are certain assumptions that come with the arts? What are some underlying root causes that the art scene is, let's say, um, diminishing in the world or let's say it's being uh, increasingly more irrelevant in, let's say, your society. So what are the root causes? Uh, who are the stakeholders who are actually involved in the arts? And what do these stakeholders actually serve to do? How, do, how would they affect your question? How would they affect your argument? So these are the, the kind of ways you want to start thinking. You're going to be thinking more critically. Um, some of us or some teachers will call it taking a more evaluative stance on the issue, right? So you're really going to get more evaluative. You're looking at the different perspectives. You're looking at root causes. You're looking at underlying assumptions that could exist within that topic itself, right? So like I said, this is subjective. It really depends on the subject. So the pros of this is that it helps you in taking things to the next level of understanding. It helps you to develop critical thinking, which is crucial. Right, you need to be very fast, be able to think fast and think smart when it comes to the exam. And it helps you to develop a full understanding of the content. Right, it also helps when it comes to the application of content for exam questions like I've just said. Um, it really, really does help. Right, This part, it is when you start to, um, your brain will start to actually think of further steps, right? things on a more advanced level. So when it comes to the exams, when you apply it to the question, you realize that your answer is much more worthy of the higher marks instead. 
So these are some examples that I have for you. Uh, for me, like I said, it's online notes. It is the more critical notes. So I've got economics. I've got general paper here. So if you look at my general paper, for example, we have things like um, policies that I've actually tried to highlight um, with kind of like what are some of the issues over here what are some of the problems policies and then for econs i've got causal links and it's all basically just causal links on um how certain in this case is macro right how certain goals lead to um, affecting other goals or affecting other issues in society so this is what i mean when we're looking at how we can bring it to the next level it is not simply um, what a textbook says because the textbook for example would just say oh unemployment uh, leads to lower living standards but what else right the textbook only says this much are we able to link it to even um, deeper concepts are we able to link it to other areas that we have learned or other areas of knowledge that we have already learned before so this is what i mean when it comes to taking for me online notes or for you it could be analytical critical notes instead Alright, so the next one is going to be question-centric notes. So the purpose of this is to actually apply your knowledge and your understanding um, or any of your content that you've already mastered into actual exam questions. So we are fitting ourselves to the actual exam requirements that are necessary. So at this stage, most of your content, trust me, will be very, very well-versed in your head. Oops. Well-versed in your head, right? Um, you have to trust me on that okay? If provided you have done let's say the first two layers of notes or the first three layers of notes you've done a few sets of notes already by now the content is in your head you do not have to worry so what you have to do is you have to start to be confident in what you have already mastered and start to apply them because there's no point having content in your head but you are unsure of how to apply them so this is where question centric notes come into play we are going to be basically looking at practicing questions and then later on studying the solutions Right, I know we are always brought up in a, in a society, in a culture which tells us that, oh, you shouldn't copy the textbook, or you shouldn't copy the solutions, or you shouldn't look at the solutions. But when it comes to A-levels, studying the solutions can actually be used to your advantage. I'm not saying copying the answers, right? but I'm saying that you do the question itself, and you later compare it to the solutions to help you understand what are your loopholes that you are facing, so, right, what are you missing out on, as well as what are the various... Um, ways or various techniques that the solution has used in which you have um, not used yourself. So it helps you to understand how to better apply the required content to the relevant questions instead. So this is very important. Solutions are solutions for a reason. Model answers are modeled because they are supposed to be a model for your answers. So go ahead and use those to your advantage. Right? If you have them already in your hands, Use it, understand it, read it, study it, see how the actual question is supposed to be answered and then compare it to yourself or get your teacher to mark your papers and see what you are lacking so that you can better address it when it comes to the actual exams instead. Right, so always, always try and set targets for yourself. Get some practice done, right? Question-centric notes are the more time-consuming ones. They require you to actually practice questions, do question analysis. These are the more... um time texting based notes so go ahead and aim set aims for yourself for example doing five essays per week or 100 mcq questions per week uh for me my if you guys are taking jog or econs i usually did around five jog essays and five econs essays per week all right and then i will submit it to my teacher to mark so you can go ahead and set similar goals for yourself of course if it's too much and you don't have enough time it's fine uh go ahead and you know refix Right, your, your study methods to ensure that it better helps you instead. Um, but I would think that this is actually a very good way for you to uh, be able to lock in and apply the content that you have already studied and you are already um, confident in having done the previous sets of notes. All right? Okay. Oops. Okay, I'll go ahead and take a short break. Okay, wait, before that, let's just go through this. So this is an example of a question. Right, question centric notes. So I'm basically in this case doing it causal links. So it's really completely up to you, right? You can just go ahead and do how you plan to do it, but just give yourself a question and then work on the actual solutions that you think you are supposed to answer the questions, um, the question itself, and then go ahead and um compare it to the solutions after that, or either that ask the teacher to mark it for you, get some comments on how you can further improve yourself after that. Right? 
Okay, so I'm going to pause the video over here. You can go ahead and take a, maybe a short 10 second break um, and then we'll move on to the last one and then we will sum up this entire video. You know, we are already almost towards the end. Let's just finish this up, okay? So, oops. So, the last part on mind maps. All right, so mind maps are actually going to be, um, for me, my quickest and my most summarized notes, right? These are the notes which we're looking at um, high-level summaries. Okay, we're not looking at basic mind maps anymore. We're looking at high-level summaries. Um, it is really the set of notes that should be done very, very quickly. You can get it done in 20 minutes, and it is there to refresh your memory. So the final layer for me was this, my maps, um, it can never, uh, sorry, my maps can be done in an instant. Okay, I'm talking about entire content, okay, entire chapter, right? It can really be done in, in an instant. You just need to grab a piece of paper, write down a header, so write down a header in the middle, and then branch out, start branching out all the relevant uh, content that you already know. And after this, check back with your original notes to see if you missed anything. Right, so the good things about mind maps, right, is that they act as a refresher to all the content that you already know. So you should already know all this, which is why you're doing a mind map. You're not doing a mind map to copy uh, your notes and then try and bunch out, right? You're doing this because you already know all the content, but you don't want to write it all out in point form or anything again, right? This can help you to just bunch out very, very quickly. Um, it helps you to identify potential or either that loopholes in your learning areas which you may have missed out prior. And it is the fastest way of doing notes on the go, right? It is highly, highly convenient. You can literally just grab a piece of paper, sit down at the desk, spend just 10 minutes munching out everything and double checking whether your knowledge or the, or the content that you've written down um, tallies with your original set of notes or your textbook itself. So I give you an example over here. This is one that I did for geography and it was a very short amount of time. Um, what I did was I basically just wrote in the middle for example, understanding development, right? Team 2.1, right? I have a whole set of this. Okay, so I have one for each different chapter. Um, and I branched it out, right? This was this is actually based on the syllabus document. Um, whereby I've got the different types of let's say uh thinking about development. So you've got a core periphery model, the bottom-up development, and then the dependency theory, and then I branch out everything. So I've even got evaluation points as well, and I'm branching out what do I need to know for each different part. And then I've also got measuring development. You've got HDI, MPI, I mean HDI, MPI, and then I've got all the different stages, the solutions, I'm sorry, the limitations, the strengths, limitations. Apologies, that's not where I cut off actually. And then I've got other things like MDGs, your SDGs, which are all also consolidated onto this one mind map, right? With the different goals, the purpose, the problems that they have faced. So you notice that all my information that actually is from my textbook is really on this mind map. It is just in simplified forms and easy to understand ways such that when I read a certain line, I instantly know that, okay, this means what from the textbook. So what should I be explaining here? So this is what my map should do, right? They served not to be a chore, right? Not to be something that is extremely messy because this may look messy to some of you, but to me, I think it's lovely. I think it doesn't look very bad. Um, and it is really meant for you to consolidate and ensure that all your information can all be um, really summed up very nicely for your own learning for you to understand as simply as possible. So this is what my map is all about. So in sum, we've actually reached the end. I know it's been a very, very long video. If you have sat through it all the way until here, I respect you, right? Go ahead and leave a comment in the sec comment section saying that you've you have been all the way until here. Uh, but let's just finish this up. Let's give it a good ending. So in summary, what you should you be focusing on? Okay, notes should never be seen as a chore. Okay, it should be something you look forward to and it should be done in, I mean, you should take pride in doing it, right? Because people who do notes, right, firstly, it's not easy to do notes. I recognize that fact. Um, but you have to realize that notes really do help you a lot. Okay, they will slowly build the knowledge at the back of your head and you'll start to get stronger and stronger and stronger. So look forward to doing it. Right? Look forward to the day by you you after one year of doing that set of, same set of notes, you say that okay, I can actually understand the content that I've done weeks ago because I've gotten to this layer of notes over here. So not everyone will need these five layers of notes or a whole stack. Um, different people, like I've said, will learn differently and require various types, okay, varying types of notes to help you in your learning. So like I said, look for what your present needs are and address those needs itself. 
right? Look for what suits you best. Maybe for some of you guys who are approaching the exams very soon, now it may be the best time for you to actually start doing your mind maps, right? Get those mind maps locked down, right? Ensure that you are able to, without looking at the textbook, branch out everything that you know about a specific chapter of your syllabus. If you're able to do that confidently and you don't have a lot missing out, you know that at least you have mastered the content for that chapter, right? So that is crucial. Go ahead and start doing those kind of things because it is very, very quick to do. You don't need a lot of time and I mean, you don't even have a lot of time left to begin with, right? And lastly, do not freeload or copy off other people's notes. It really does not help you at your learning. Um, do it yourself and trust me, you really become smarter, Right. Do not ever go ahead and go, I mean, go outside and buy notes, buy from your friends, borrow from your friends, copy your friends' notes because their way of learning is very, very different from your way of learning. Right. Back in secondary school, I remember that I used to always borrow my friends' notes and I would never do well right? because I would actually never understand what my friend is actually writing and I wasn't even the one who wrote them myself, meaning to say that I've actually never absorbed it firsthand. Right, so you want to be able to write your own notes yourself and absorb it firsthand. That would really help you to take your learning to the next level and ensure that you become an overall much, much smarter person. Alright, so if not, that's actually all for this entire video. It has been very long. My throat is really very scratchy, so I will end it off over here. Um, I hope I didn't speak too fast as well. If I did, I am very, very sorry because some of you guys are saying that I speak way too fast. Uh, I have certain time limits actually on, on, on my recording softwares and stuff so I can't really you know slow down way too much right yeah but I hope this video has actually helped you in some way or another if it did be sure to give this video a like as well as a subscribe to the channel um, it really does help me a lot and go ahead and share this video with your friends if you think that it can help them um, in, in crafting stronger notes for themselves and it can really um, you know Make sure, you know, help them in their studies in any sort of way possible. So if not, if any questions on what on earth notes are or you still unsure, you're still unsure on what no how you should be doing notes, um, go ahead and just leave a comment in the comment section below. You guys already know that I answer basically almost every comment. So um, don't be afraid to leave a comment down there. All right. So if not, that's all I have for, for this video. I would be uploading my, I mean, I'll be carrying on my content series for the next few days very, very soon. Um, I think Wednesday I should have one video as well. If not, I will see you guys then. Have a good one. Bye-bye.